Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the week ahead through the lens of astrology because things are confusing with life always throwing curveballs and as a result it's hard to know the right thing to do. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for Radio's The Bob and Sherry Show, here with some esoteric perspectives that might help you make more confident decisions through life's chapters. This episode is for the week beginning June 10th, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is a week of challenges. Now, challenge is always something that can result in growth, the way that competition can result in a win, but it's also tiring, and it's not always easy to muster up the effort up front. So I hope that this episode exploring the potential challenges of falling off the wagon and getting sidetracked by illusion can help prep you to have the most satisfying week possible. I'll forecast using the sun in your sign as the first house point of the chart. This is called the solar charting method, but you can get more of a personalized reading by listening to the reading for your earth sign and your soul sign, which will be listed at the end of each horoscope. And then there is your rising sign too, so use the calculator below to discover what your rising sign, aka the ascendant in astrology, is. Private readings are about five days away from reopening as I finished the last few and I already have spots pre-booked so if you want to discuss or explore whether astrology even resonates with you drop me an email at the horoscope vault at gmail.com and I will be in touch. So this week I'm jumping straight into the predictive outlooks because it is a week of planetary square aspects and these are challenging. In astrology, aspects are the angles formed between two planets on the astrological chart wheel. The angles represent relationships between the symbolism of the planets involved. And aspect is really what influences how those two themes of those planetary energies interact, whether the symbolism works in harmony or if it requires some kind of, you know, like effort or rectification kind of approach. So aspects are really fundamental in predictions. And the primary aspects are the conjunction, the sextile, the square, the trine, and the opposition. So the conjunction is just when two or more planets are in the same sign, they're very close together, they're in the same degree, or they're at least five degrees or less away from each other. And the influence of a conjunction is just that it blends the energies of the two planets or more involved, intensifying their respective influences and it can be harmonious or challenging depending on the nature of the planets involved. So the sextile is when planets are 60 degrees distance from each other. So the conjunction zero degrees distance from each other, you know, we say up to five degrees because it's give or take, but the sextile is 60 degrees distance from each other and an easy way to visualize this is just remembering that each sign on the wheel comes to a total of 30 degrees. Aries, 30 degrees. Taurus, 30 degrees. Gemini, 30 degrees. Cancer, Leo, Virgo, all the way through, each sign has 30 degrees. So if a sextile between two planets is 60 degrees apart, then you can just simplify that by saying that they are around two signs distance away from each other. So looking at the order of the signs, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, and so on. It means that Aries sextiles Gemini because they're two signs away from each other. I'm going to save all that technical stuff for an upcoming astrology learning series, so make sure you're following the show if you want to learn more about how to kind of read this stuff. But the sextile being two signs apart is generally considered harmonious and supportive, promoting cooperation and opportunity between the symbolism and the interaction. So the two themes flow quite easily. The square in astrology, which is this week's most featured aspect, the planets are 90 degrees apart. So using that knowledge of the 30 degree sign, that means they are three signs apart from one another. And the influence of the square is challenging. It, visually on a chart, it's a right angle. It's like one quarter of a square. It's like the angle point part of the square. So the challenge is really that it creates tension, 
conflict, its obstacles. It requires a lot of effort to integrate the two energies of the planets involved because they are kind of uncomfortably pushing against each other for dominance. But when it's actually mastered, the square can lead to significant growth and achievement through overcoming specific challenges. The next aspect is the trine. It's a separation of 120 degrees. So remember the 30 situation going on. That means these are four zodiac signs apart. 120 divided by 30 degrees is four. So it's four signs. An easy way to remember a trine is that all water signs trine each other. All fire signs trine each other. Same for air. Same for Earth. So Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, all trine. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, trine. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, they trine each other. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Those signs are all trine each other. The trine, it's like a triangle. I'm guessing that's where some of the origin of the word came from. That's not something I've actually looked into. So if you know the origin of the word trine, then let me know. Send me a message, an email, or pop a comment below. But the trine, it does sound like triangle. It forms a triangle looking kind of shape on the chart. It's a harmonious aspect. It's all about ease and flow. It brings out the best, the absolute best of all of the symbolisms involved. The only thing to really be cautious of with the trine is because it's such a pleasant situation. You can actually be so lazy and have too much faith, too much trust that stuff's going to go right because the trying just feels so good that you actually forget to take the action needed for the stuff to go well. And it's always my favorite example of a trine, maybe a chart showing the potential to win the lottery via some kind of trine. You have so much faith in that win that you forget to buy the ticket. But the old cliche, you've got to be in it to win it. If the trine shows up, it means it's it's something accessible to you. But you have to do the thing to kind of cultivate and harvest that success. And then there is the opposition. So these are planets at 180 degrees away from each other. So that is six signs apart. They are directly opposite each other on the chart wheel. The influence of this aspect represents complete polarity like that's what the word opposition is complete polarity and it's tension it's like a tug of war the stress of a square that right angle corner aspect with two themes kind of fighting for dominance they fight for dominance in a way of imploding the other one crushing the other one whereas an opposition the tug of war dynamic between these two planets is about one completely leading the other. It highlights an area of conflict where balance is needed. Balance needs to be addressed. Oppositions are really interesting aspects because when an opposition actually shows up in a chart natally or from the transits that I'll read in the week to week readings, it always, always 100% speaks of involvement of another person. So the tension of a square can show up just with you on your own, in a vacuum, in space. If you're just existing by yourself, you can still have this tension. The square is tension that you can feel all by yourself. The opposition tension, this tug of war, this need for balance, only ever shows up when someone else gets involved. Always, always, always. This is one of the key things to remember about aspect and it's a really helpful way to determine the difference of tension between you know the square struggle of life versus the opposition struggle of life so if you see an opposition you know that the nature of those energies are at odds with each other and it's brought into reality by somebody else because you you don't organically oppose yourself and you probably exist on one end or the other end of that opposition spectrum So the person that comes along represents the opposing side and you're on your own team, you're on your own side and the other person comes and tips the scale. 
they give an alternative perspective or they just pull the other end of that tug of war rope and now you have to pay attention and be like oh crap wait something is off balance here and so those are that's just a quick rundown look of the aspects this particular week is full of squares so you know some of this can be initiated by other people but most of this is going to be felt internally by yourself the square the 90 degree planetary aspect the situation where planets are three signs apart the symbolism shows up as challenge competition an imploding pressure that needs to be mastered and utilized by yourself in order to experience a win this is literally win loss energy the other week we had nothing but you know win win energy but this week is win versus loss so starting these rounds of competitive experiences it really gets going on tuesday 11th it kind of warms up on monday it really depends on the time zone that you're in but from i guess monday hitting hard on tuesday we have mars in taurus square pluto in aquarius if you did not catch the Mars in Taurus episode, I'm going to link that below. Mars is freshly, newly switched signs into Taurus, which is basically like wading through mud or quicksand. In itself, the six week ingress of Mars through Taurus is just a lot of extra energy needed for you to get where you want to go. And there are three big mistakes to watch out for during Mars in Taurus season. So, yeah, I'll link that episode below for you to check out if you missed it but mars in taurus square a retrograde aquarius pluto this is power struggles this is a struggle to have personal power to do much else other than survive and remember that's just for this week you have ambitions internally but they might not go anywhere the experience of your efforts in the external material world just becomes like moving through water and there's just this consistent energy of resistance in pretty much all that you do. So avoid the temptation to try and deal with it by moving faster because you'll just wear yourself out quicker. And there's six weeks of this resistance. You cannot go fast for six weeks. So learn to pace yourself for now at least. And one of the big theme points of this challenge is about falling off the wagon of some kind. So... You're there committed to a new direction and a new thing. You've been good in moving away from old forms of existence or of life, leaving the old job, the old relationship, the old city, you know, destroying something, basically some area of your life in the last year that you have vowed to change completely for the better. But this square that starts the week feels like a moment of relapse. At this point, it might be quite difficult to stick to that new direction rigidly and things might be quite tempting for you to kind of revert to old ways and if you do please be warned that going backwards even though it seems more productive and fruitful in some ways it comes with a level of hard work or struggle or difficulty that just is not worth it a situation that has its own consequences which is why you left that stuff behind in the first place right so try not to trip up fall off the wagon or go backwards. So the next day there is another square. On the 12th middle of the week, Mercury in Gemini squares, Saturn in Pisces, which is the theme of feeling excluded that goes head to head with this open emotional energy. So basically being in your feelings and having severe FOMO. So that's the fear of missing out. This could be fear of missing out to the maximum degree. Feelings of inadequacy, lack of self-confidence, feeling like you are blocked in getting ahead while everyone else is having the best time, full of progress and success. But don't let this momentary mind confusion overwhelm you. It's still best for you to work on projects alone to minimize your contact with situations and people and things that stimulate that fear of missing out. Don't let your mind trick you into thinking that everybody else is having a great time and you're off over here trying to better yourself and it's not actually working so you're you know fearing of not having those things that other people are representing which aren't necessarily the truth on the 14th you have the mercury kazemi and i'm going to put it simply it's the sun conjunct mercury they call anything any planet that 
comes up close to conjunct the sun, Akazimi, because the word translates as in the heart of. So when planets are exactly in the same degree as the sun, they're just considered in the heart of the sun. So the sun-mercury conjunction or the Kazemi happening in Gemini, firstly, is massive for you if your birthday is around the 15th or the 16th of June. It means you carry this theme of this conjunction with you for the whole year ahead. Keep your eyes peeled for the upcoming birthday episodes because I, we know that birthdays are special, we celebrate them, but there's a an even more potent reason for why they're special that maybe you might not be aware of. But this aspect in general, though, even if your birthday is not nearby, this conjunction is a message to withdraw from negative influences. So it seems to be in keeping with the week and how there's going to be this tempting situation that's almost like a test, full of emotional pulls and tugs to your survival, which in the energy system, the heart is survival. So if you think about, I'm going to liken it to the chakra system. Everybody thinks the heart is love, but it's not. The identity part of life, the identity part of yourself, of your energy system, is love. Because you really can only love from a state of pure personal acceptance and personal love of diversity and everything about the world that is different. The heart doesn't care for identity, and that is where love stems from. The heart is the power engine. The heart is the motor. Its its only operation is to survive. If the heart switches off, you are no longer living. So it's all about material resources and stuff to fuel its ongoing functioning. It is not about love. Heart is not about love. I cannot say that enough times. The heart is about survival. And the identity, the self-acceptance, leads to acceptance of others, which is pure love. But coming back to topic, matters this week, pull and tug at your heart strings. And that's because your body is curious if the old way of survival, because the heart is survival, would actually work for you again, which links to this fear of missing out. And the exact phrasing of this, because this is a message of discipline, but the exact phrasing of this is the discipline to maintain a pure state. So while you're still debating and weighing up options, that could be a little bit like going backwards if you take them, ask yourself this. Is the progress you've made outside of that situation, once you left that situation, has it helped you in any way? Are you reconsidering? stomping back over old grounds simply because of boredom that has arisen out of a lack of stimulation in the current pace of your ongoing process because Mars is in Taurus and everything's gone a little bit slow now, which is essentially you exhibiting a lack of patience, which is one of the three mistakes to avoid making in this Mars in Taurus six-week season. Again, the episode is linked below. The final really notable aspect this week around 16th of 17th of June, is Venus in Gemini square, Neptune in Pisces. Yes, another square, another challenge. It really is a tough week out here for real. It's one of those challenging weeks where challenges are lived almost strictly internally within yourself. So don't talk to other people. You have to talk nicely to yourself about the current status quo. You have to talk nicely to yourself and remind yourself why you took this new path that's now going slow, but is somehow better or healthier for you. And remind yourself why you came off of the old path. Because it's easy to see things outside of yourself, not as they truly are. You can paint this glamorized picture of something that you left and feel like it's what you want when it really is not. So the key word is illusion. What illusions are you seeing as reality? These illusions are going to be things that you've experienced 100% before. You've been in that situation. And maybe it wasn't as wonderful as you're currently re-seeing it as now that you're outside of it. That situation was full of extremes and you're remembering maybe the only the good times and not the bad times. And it's possible that the bad times outweighed the good times. So you're focusing on like 20% 
20% of the wonderful beneficial experience just momentarily and then you're selectively forgetting 80% of that experience that made you feel like crap, that made you sick, that made you uncomfortable, that wasn't satisfying. It wasn't the pretty picture that your psyche has decided to currently make out for this situation to be. So honour your experience. Remember facts of feelings. Remember how it actually felt so that you don't get swayed by memories misrepresenting the situation, so that you don't wind up going backwards and paying a very freaking high price for doing so. Each horoscope is timestamped below for your convenience. So this week, Aries falling off the wagon is really about getting dragged into power struggles, and this could be with others. This could be with yourself. If it's with others that you come out of this place of peace for, where you, you know, previously just let people be wrong and maybe now you feel aggravated to fight. Your preferred choice would have been to let others exist in their incorrectness, but now you're falling off that wagon, you're being dragged out of your kind of harmonious place where you are happy to just let things be. Or it might be that you previously found a positive work-life balance and that is now becoming imbalanced and you're working more or you're working harder than you know is right and good for you to do. And if you push yourself beyond your limits to stand up for yourself instead of just letting people be wrong, or if you push beyond your limits to work harder than you know you kind of have the capacity to do, then you could suffer injury or exhaustion. Mercury in Gemini square Saturn in Pisces and your fear of missing out is to do with a career decision. So you could procrastinate and hold back in making a decision because of fear of losing out on what you currently already have. And the question is, are you considering that the new thing could turn out to be better than the old thing? Or are you ignoring that potential for the current comfort? And just to let you know, if you don't take this new chance to better your experience, you might actually miss out on that opportunity altogether while you're busy thinking that you'll miss out on the thing that you are currently comfortable in, winding up with you getting stuck exactly where you are. The withdrawal from negative influences is about not getting sidetracked. So if you're supposed to be doing something, you know, like errands and stuff, but instead you're busy chatting or gossiping or taking part in community stuff that's fun for a minute, it could turn into this like domino effect into your next six months so this is a message to stay focused this week and be mindful of distractions you may be in the mood for fun and games but yeah that's going to come at a price the final point of illusion is that you may not be very realistic about finances a moment of positivity that is just a moment you may start to feel like this uptick in finances is a permanent fixture it's a stroke of luck that turns out to be just a stroke of luck So don't be wasteful in a moment of being flush because you will feel it later. To get more from your reading, listen to the reading for your earth sign. Your earth sign is Libra. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. And it lets you know more about the earthly developments this week. And then there is the soul sign for you. The soul sign is Capricorn. It's the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. And it kind of is said to be when your soul path developed. It lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then listen to the reading for your rising sign. It's going to be the most event aligned reading. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. So this week for Taurus, falling off the wagon might be to do with hearing gossip or finding out news about a situation that you have left behind. And instead of wishing the situation well and kind of accepting that you've moved past it, you dig deeper and you want to know more. Looking back is only ever going to trip you up. And this might actually coincide with this week's fear of missing out aspect too. With financial and resource changes happening in your life as we speak, you might reminisce back to an old way of bringing in income. You might look to it fondly. And you might feel like you're missing out as other people still have access to that work life. But it is important to remember that everything you've left, you have left for a reason. Because in the long run, it was a dead end. Try turning any fear of missing out financially into structured focus and pay attention to managing the reality of your finances now. Knowing that the more you take care of what's going on in the present brings more potential to your income and finances. 
staying in the now avenues open up for you that will be much better than what you think you're missing out on. Part of this is going to be withdrawing from forces that are not necessarily negative. Just other people sharing their success is definitely a positive thing. It just might make you feel some type of way. We all progress at different paces. You've moved on. Others haven't. Then you might need to minimize conversation and communication with those who still exist in places that are in the past to you. Especially if those conversations make you question your decisions and the choices that you've recently made that were actually for the benefit of your self-worth and value. The point of illusion this week is that people might be painting a slightly exaggerated picture or the more reason to kind of take some distance. So, you know, for you to have these feelings and these fears of missing out based on other people overselling something, it's not going to be good. It's not going to feel good. It's a recipe for disaster. So do your best this week to avoid other people's projections of how perfect the past that you've just left behind is, remember that you're going somewhere way, way better in the future. To get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. The earth sign is just a sign earth was in when you were born on it. It Tells you a bit more about the earthly developments this week. And for you, that sign is Scorpio. And then there is the soul sign, which is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, said to be when your soul path developed. And it lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. Your soul sign is Aquarius. And then there is the most event aligned reading you can listen to, which is going to be for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. So this week for Gemini, falling off the wagon might be to do with maintaining connections with people who recently you put some kind of distance between yourself and them. This is the idea of going backwards a little bit because others who appear to be friends on the surface are actually not friends they're not good people at all and they've shimmied their way back into your life the fear of missing out might be the idea that people are like waxing lyrical and talking about their progress and you feel inferior to that you feel like things in your life are preventing you from making the progress that you see other people making but it's more the case that you're dealing with serious issues of transformation you've got so much change thrust upon you that those other people do not have to deal with right now. So naturally, you've got a different order of priorities and you shouldn't let that make you feel less than others. We all have a different tempo to life. There's a few upcoming episodes I'm doing on the pace of certain areas of life for each sign, so watch out for that because we all progress in this kind of relay way, in fits and spurts, and you're in a situation where you're fitting or fixing something and others are spurting, So don't compare your path to theirs. The idea of withdrawing from negative forces is just that you are equally busy to other people. It's just you're equally busy in a different direction. The direction is about becoming more clear of where you're headed. And there's lots of other little errands in your life taking place that you need to focus on. So withdraw from people who seem intent on leading you astray from the things you need to do or leading you off the beaten path or pulling you off that wagon and backwards into behavior that does not help you. The illusion this week is that someone else cares when they don't. You might trick yourself, or they might trick you, into thinking that their input and their care about your life is them loving you and helping you, but it's not. If it barks like a dog, it's a dog. So if someone is encouraging you to lean into or do something that doesn't feel good, they're not good. But your mind might trick you to think that you you should do it because of companionship and camaraderie and blah, blah, blah. But the illusion is when people are taking you into places that you don't want to be or, you know, situations are encouraging you in ways that aren't healthy for you. It's because either they are miserable and misery loves company or they are threatened by your maturity of process, by how you're progressing because of lack of their own maturity and process or their lack of progression and they want to keep you at the same level as them to make themselves feel good to get more from your reading consider listening to the reading for your earth sign it's a sign earth was in when you were born on it it kind of lets you know more about the earthly developments of the week and your earth sign is sagittarius and then there is the reading for your soul sign so the soul sign is the sign that the sun was in three months before you were born 
This is said to be the time frame in which your soul path develops. Listening to that lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Pisces. And then the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. So this week for Cancer, falling off the wagon might feel like it's happening in the work or the professional space, but it's not actually happening. It's this natural slowing down of things where the slower pace is about becoming more pointed and more direct and more specific in what you do and how you do it and who you do it with professionally. There are so many different pieces when it comes to success and fast isn't the only way to go. There are so many different paces when it comes to success and fast isn't the only one. So don't let yourself get down by a change in pace with your work and your goals and certainly don't let it lead to the fear of missing out where you like start to look back on something that you used to do and there's this nostalgic feel for something that you left in the past and then you make the mistake of thinking that going backwards to something you left behind is a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's just classic FOMO showing up. So if it does get too much, avoid talking to people who seem to stimulate this fear of missing out. Just for this week. Conversation can resume as normal next week, but for this week, steer clear of people who take you back to an old place. And I guess this coincides with the withdrawal from negative influences. This is a time that is best used to remove obstacles from your way, so anything that hinders you moving forward. Time management seems to be a big thing here, so try things like time blocking or using lists or organizational systems or apps to help you deal with and structure the things that you know you need to focus on, or just good old pen and paper. Just get everything down that needs to be done, and for this week, stick to doing things only from that list. Don't get sidetracked being too sociable. The point of illusion is surrounding your friendships. Maybe something a friend has said led you to feel uncertain about your position or your progress or it's somehow giving you a false illusion of a situation based on a very small narrow perspective like you can't put all your eggs in one basket and maybe other people are making you feel some kind of way for following up lots of different options for experimenting and exploring avenues for you to take professionally Maybe others are finding so much success in one simple direction and they're sharing this with you. But this is just their isolated boost of luck. Don't let this lead you to believe that you are unlucky or that you are scattered or that you are unfortunate in some way. Because yeah, everything this week seems to be shared under some kind of illusion. So a privacy solitude kind of week is best for you. And to get more from your reading, listen to the reading for your earth sign. The earth sign is a sign earth was in when you were born on it. It lets you know more about the earthly development and your earth sign is Capricorn. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. So the soul sign is the sign the sun was in when your soul path is said to have developed three months before you were born. It tells you more about what's going on behind the scenes and your soul sign is Aries. And then the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Leo, falling off the wagon starts with the idea of becoming too closed in. It's this weird inverse wagon where you are usually outgoing and extroverted and ready for all kinds of new experiences, but for some reason this week, you go introvert. You're much less outgoing than your usual self. This is like the fear of going into something new, the fear of doing something, the fear of the unknown. And fear kind of gets to you both ways this week. All of the signs are going through this fear of missing out on something. So your falling off the wagon originally is about being less courageous and brave than usual and worrying more than necessary. The fear of kind of incorrectly embarking on something. But then you get this double fear to be scared if you do and scared if you don't, where the concern is about missing out. So the fear of you doing something and it being wrong or the fear of you not doing something and you missing out, all seems to show up in the workspace. It's literally something that has you worried if you do and worried if you don't. And friends will not help you this week. This is 100% a situation to mentally walk through by yourself. 
the negative influences that you need to distance yourself from is going to be the people who try and give you advice like they know what you're going through because they don't. And while it's really, really sweet that others want to support you, this is something you have to figure out alone. It's like full responsibility on you. You can maybe utilize your best friends to kind of voice your thoughts and use them as a sounding board if they have the time and space for that, where you talk things through and they just listen. That could be helpful. And you'll get a lot out of hearing your own voice as you talk about your perspective on this. But don't be open to advice from others. And the point of illusion this week for you is simply the uncertainty of what to do. To do the thing in your career or to not do the thing. That is your big question. And if you can wait until next week to make the decision, it might be best because more clarity arrives in a few days and you don't have to try so damn hard to figure out the best option for you to take. If you want to get more depth for your reading, consider listening to your earth sign, which is Aquarius. This is the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. It tells you more about the earthly developments this week. And then there is the soul sign, which for you is Taurus. This is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be the time frame at which the soul path develops. Listening to that will tell you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there is a reading for your rising sign, known as the ascendant in astrology. And if you don't know what your ascendant is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Virgo, falling off the wagon could be to do with something like how you handled or how you go on to handle a situation involving you and somebody else you had history with, or you had interest in, or you had some kind of connection with. It's either that you were walked all over and maybe you didn't get to make yourself clear, you didn't get to heal, you didn't get any proper closure. Or just to play devil's advocate, maybe it was you that dominated the situation and it went wrong before it had a chance to go right. And now being left with the fear of missing out is that something you lost based on the ending of a connection you had with somebody, this loss feels heavy to deal with. This could be breakup related. It could be business disconnection or any other kind of loss that weighs heavy on your heart. You may turn it inwards and wonder what you could have done differently, but that's just self-torture because it wasn't you it was them the reason this is happening or did happen is because you've got bigger things to tend to an important career decision or turning point is about to be reached you may have to take on more responsibility and that means only having the most genuine best support around you withdrawal from negative influences before embarking on a career change as big as this is vital because you only want to take with you those people who truly are genuinely worth you sharing your hard-earned rewards with. So it is a good time to knuckle down and focus on making decisions in your career. This week you might just be relatively introspective. The illusion is that travel is the best form of therapy right now and while a vacation isn't a bad thing if it's the right time for you to do that, it's important to make sure that you're not using travel for any kind of escape or you're not going to any kind of other escape of the mind. You're not letting your mind be elsewhere too often. There still must be something practical to any of the travels or educations or investigations that you go into. Yes, it is important to be into self-care, but also you need to pay attention to a few work-related things too. Get the hardest things done first and then celebrate with relaxation and vacation after. Put things in the correct, best, most efficient priority order for your growth. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign, which is Pisces. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. And this lets you know more about the earthly developments this week. And then there is the soul sign. The soul sign is simply the sign that the sun was in around three months before you were born. This is said to be when your soul path developed. Your soul sign is Gemini and listening to that is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there's the reading for your rising sign. This is going to be the most event aligned reading you can listen to. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Libra, falling off the wagon might be to do with something. It's like getting caught up in something. Caught up in a dream or a situation that's all very lovely, but maybe has a little bit of extra hidden work to it that meets the eye. This is a project or a romantic adventure that's already in motion that could ramp up in intensity. 
And there's this idea of literally not being able to have your cake and eat it too, because you've got to go all in on some one thing or someone. And the potential fear of missing out seems to revolve around taking your time with details of a negotiation or a contract because a mistake in the paperwork of something could cause problems where you literally miss out on perks or an advancement somehow. So pay attention to the smallest details this week. Your ability to see the big picture may be limited, but that's because a more narrow focus is correct. Withdrawing from the negative is just making sure that the terms of an agreement works for you and not against you. It must be win-win or no deal at all. So make sure you inspect paperwork and legal contracts with a fine tooth comb. You come into contact with or you meet important people. So you must be ready to drown out all the other external noise this week. The illusion of the week for you is thinking that credit and finances are nice enough for you to get carried away with and you enjoy digging into them. While you shouldn't deprive yourself, you absolutely should be cautious of going over budget too. Things might be flush at work or just from your efforts, but this is a fluctuating up and down thing, as you well know, so don't get too carried away. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. It lets you know more about the earthly developments this week and your earth sign is Aries. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. So the soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path developed. Your soul sign is Cancer, and listening to the reading for that is going to let you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there is the reading for your rising sign. It's going to be the most event-aligned reading you can listen to. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. So this week for Scorpio, falling off the wagon is really about your working conditions. Falling off the wagon of your work goals, or what your doing in your workspace is no bueno this week. It's not allowed. If you do fall off of your work momentum, you might find that very harsh conditions prevail. Don't trust others to do the things that only you can do. Buckle up, dive in and do it yourself. Also be cautious of falling off the wagon health-wise, because if you let your guard down and you go back on behaviours where you've been strict and disciplined, then your wellness could suffer a little bit. The fear of missing out this week is a missed opportunity because you slacked somewhere maybe. That's the only real fear of missing out. Falling backwards into bad habits will absolutely leave you with an empty space where there could have been tons of options for you to progress. So really try not to slack in those areas where it's so important to you. Remember this when you feel like reaching for the wrong thing or doing the most self-indulgent of actions. Yes, you might feel isolated or lonely in being so focused right now. Others are busy doing things that they want to do, things for fun, and here you are doing things sensibly and seriously. And you might want to join in on what they're doing, but you have more serious matters to tend to. The time for you to relax will come soon, it's just not now. This is also the idea that communication with somebody important to you is halted or delayed if that is relevant to you. The withdrawal from negative influences is that you might be ignoring something that is in front of you that's very important. It's some kind of information that's hard for anyone else to grasp. Might be some woo-woo information or some occult information or just some kind of hidden process. Something more mystical or spiritual. Or just something generally different that's the answer to a lot of things that you require answers to. But you might ignore this because it's so alternative. Don't dismiss anything at all this week. Go full Scorpio and truly investigate the full capacity of information that you receive or that you happen upon to see if it can truly give you an extra edge. The illusion this week is that others might not be who you thought they were. And this works both ways. Someone you thought the world of you discover that they're not so much this wonderful being, but also someone that you easily dismiss. You might be shocked to find out that, wow, this person has so much more substance than you thought. They knock your socks off by being so much more than you had given them credit for. 
So get ready for your perspectives of others to be turned completely on its head. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to your earth sign. Your earth sign is Taurus. Listening to that is going to tell you more about the earthly developments this week. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born, which is said to be when your soul path developed. This is very closely linked to the life path number. Listening to the soul sign for you, this is Leo. We'll tell you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then there's the reading for your rising sign. This is the most event aligned reading you can listen to. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Sagittarius, falling off the wagon is to do with impatience. In a bid to progress your life and find true security and happiness, you might impatiently push a little bit too much and it could backfire if you do. Heads up, things are going to move a lot slower for the next six weeks. Get used to it. Go check out the Mars in Taurus episode to learn more about that. Get comfortable with a more steady pace. The tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady wins the race. All of those cliches are valid now. So if you feel yourself getting antsy and hyped up and impatient, check in with yourself and maybe exercise to get it out of your system. The fear of missing out part of this is that you might be pushed to try and act quickly. You don't want to miss out on something. You want to grasp this opportunity to move forward, but you might not be ready. And there is one interesting thing that the universe will do to let you know whether or not to act. It will directly impact your finances. If you financially can or you financially cannot do something, there is your answer. Don't push outside of abilities and capacity. Let the situation reveal to you whether it's the right thing to do, the right or wrong move to make, by witnessing whether or not it's accessible to you. You won't miss out on anything that's meant for you. And the more you push, the harder you make the unseen forces of nature and such work to try and come back and correct your premature sometimes hasty action. If you can, let the people you trust or the partnerships that you have faith in lead the way for a little while while you regulate your nervous system. The withdrawal from negative influences for you is about reaching an agreement. Do not agree to something if there is the slightest negative hit in your body. Like, you might feel like compromising your needs so that you can move forward a little bit. But there are things that are normally non-negotiable for you and you're willing to maybe negotiate them because of an urgency to progress or to change your life, but that's not going to work. Stick to your non-negotiable things. Rejection is protection, as they say. So if something's not working out in your favor, then there is a reason why. The illusion this week is that you have this problem with the illusion of time. I laugh because I have so many Sagittarius clients and the time management thing is the biggest thing you might have difficulty staying on schedule this week and you might be late for things more often use clocks and watches and timers and alarms to the best of your ability and level up your time management use time blocking any kind of time structural system is going to be your best friend and to get more from your reading listen to the reading for your earth sign your earth sign is Gemini and listening to that is going to tell you more about the earthly developments this week. And then the reading for your soul sign. So your soul sign is Virgo. This is said to be the sign of when your soul path developed. It's the time frame of when the sun was in the sign three months before yours. It tells you more about what's going on behind the scenes. And then for the most event aligned reading, you're going to want to listen to the reading for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Capricorn, falling off the wagon looks like some repairs that were needed that you knew about and you avoided tending to until the very last minute. This is something at home or similar. It might be at work. And you need to face the problem head on now. Things that you really have left to the last minute because it's only going to get bigger if you don't. No more ignoring or putting something off. It is time to handle it. The fear of missing out is the idea of you missing the bigger picture because you get some news that is, it's scary or it's nerve wracking and it stimulates your adrenaline or nervous system. And instead of seeing this fight or flight reaction as the idea of fighting for the benefits of the other side of this change, you might 
fall into the flight side of things. You might fear this idea of change because it's large scale. So be aware that your body is doing its natural chemical thing, but your mind needs to look at the bigger picture where the benefits of putting in the effort and fighting for that thing are worth it. This also might actually include having to say goodbye to somebody, or it might include changes with work or an equally serious issue. Withdrawing from negative influence is all health-related for you. There is no two ways about it. Your requirement to withdraw from negative influences is to look at your diet and your health habits through a magnifying glass and truly honestly say, you know, this needs to go, this needs to go, that needs to stay, I need to include this. You know which behaviours have been reintegrated that shouldn't and you know which behaviours that have been let go that should have been a staple. The illusion this week is that fun and pleasantness should take centre stage but actually self-care should. It's like you know when you're excited for an event or a party and it turns out to be a disappointment after you really worked yourself up for it to be so amazing. It's like that. Anything recreational you do, the hype of it is going to be more fun than the reality. So skip the hassle. Just go straight to self-care for literally all of this week if you can. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. It's the sign opposite yours on the wheel. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. For you, this is Cancer, and it'll let you know more about the earthly happenings this week. And then there is the Sol sign. For you, this is Libra, and the soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes, and it's said to be when your soul path developed. And the most event-aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Aquarius, falling off the wagon is about getting involved with people who are not nice people, just because they maybe give off this air of power. And you know better. And deep down, you know that there's a situation that you're wrongly caught up in or you're involved in. So the start of this week might be you knowing that you need to disentangle yourself because you got caught up with the wrong types or you made the wrong commitment or you're in the wrong environment. The fear of missing out might be sadness at this realization. You enjoyed that there was something exciting about this connection, this involvement, but An error in judgment is still an error in judgment, even if it was fun for a moment. This is better to be a time of solitude and reflection on a recent decision made and how you undermined your best interests. And maybe you sidetracked yourself from true progress by getting distracted or by getting involved in things that you knew better. The withdrawal from negative influence is just that. It's the plan to withdraw from a situation because there was some info that you weren't made fully aware of, that you now know, that if you knew in advance you wouldn't have made the decision you did. Now it's time to clear things up. The important news is likely very true, even if it isn't confirmed news yet, and the illusion this week would be to do nothing about it, to be taken advantage of in a situation where your efforts are utilised, but in the near future you're just going to be discarded. Don't block your eyes and ears from seeing the truth. Don't blindly hope for a miracle change in decision. The fact of the matter is, a reckoning is coming. And you're pretty aware of that. And now is the time to act upon that info and plan ahead so that you do not get left in the lurch. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. Let you know more about the earthly happenings this week. And your earth sign is Leo. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. This is the sign that the sun was in three months before you were born. It lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Scorpio. And then the most event aligned reading you can listen to is going to be for your rising sign. And if you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Pisces, falling off the wagon is financial in its most immediate presentation. This could include some catastrophic financial collapse, or it could be the gain of something expensive, or the loss of something expensive, or it could be getting your way, getting something your way, but not in a legitimately good way. Something that you've been wishing for happens, but not the way you want it to. Something in action, something you're part of, 
may also be something that you don't agree with, and that could feel quite weird. The fear of missing out is that you feel lonely being the only one that sees things this way. Or it might be that you say goodbye to a lifestyle or a situation. You're stuck with obligations that mean that you can't do what you want to do right now because something else takes precedence and that could be quite hard to handle. The fear is maybe about missing out on satisfying your needs. Withdrawing from negative influences starts in the family, home and food space. If there is a lot on your mind about domestic life, then this is a good time to get that organised. Decluttering seems to be the key under this transit. Like, I cannot explain how, out of all the signs, Pisces needs to declutter way more regularly than any other sign. Like, you need to declutter and downsize weekly, or monthly at the very least. Because clutter, and holding on to things with a falsely perceived value, impacts your health. And when there's important things to tend to in your outside world, if your personal inside world is full of disharmony, then you don't show up as fully as you are capable of externally. The point of illusion this week is that you may say less or you may water down communication because of not being understood or because you're not wanting to be blunt. But when someone becomes overly dependent on you or leans on you a little bit too much, it might be necessary to clear any illusion of what you are and aren't willing to put up with by stating your stance. So the weekend might bring the need to clear up confusion and illusion so that others don't take too much of what you're giving or tax your energy. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it, and it lets you know more about the earthly developments this week. Your earth sign is Virgo. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. This is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. It lets you know more about what's going on behind the scenes. And your soul sign is Sagittarius. And then there's the reading for your rising sign. If you don't know what your rising sign is, use the calculator below to find out. That's it for this week. Next week looks like a lot of softening energy. Mercury and Venus both move into Cancer. And as they do, they conjunct and blend their symbolism for a very lovely experience. And then there is one more square of challenging energy before the sun leaves Gemini to initiate Cancer season. Plus a Capricorn full moon to signal a time of less harshness. After this current week was maybe a little bit more fraught with tension than usual, that's going to be welcome. Don't forget to follow the show so you never miss an episode and join the exclusive Horoscope Vault for access to bonus content and specific readings that are not available anywhere else on the web. Until next time, bye! Bye!